Good morning, friends. We're here at Playland to uh, celebrate Westchester County's celebration of Pride Month, making history today. A round of applause. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. We're going to introduce all these fine people in a second. But first, I'm going to ask Annalyn DeMarco to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, good morning. Um, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. White Plains High School student Zeta Polanco will lead us in America the Beautiful. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you. Zeta Polanco with our national anthem, Star Spangled Banner. Well, welcome. We are here today to um, not only celebrate uh, the designation of June as Pride Month in Westchester County, but also to raise two Progress Pride flags here at Playland Amusement Park and to unveil a gorgeous Progress Pride flag mural that's been painted by the loft, which we're going to see as our last activity of the day. I want to first introduce a number of our elected officials that are with us today, and then we'll hear from some of the leaders of the LGBT community uh, on this day. I'm joined, uh, as I always am, by our Deputy County Executive, the wonderful Ken Jenkins. We have the Chairman of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, you're going to be hearing from him in a few minutes, Ben Boykin. The Majority Leader of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, the Honorable Mary Jane Shimsky. And the legislator who represents this district, Legislator Catherine Parker. We're joined as well by State Senator Shelley Mayer. State Assemblyman Steve Otis. Our County Clerk Tim Idoni. We have the mayor of Rye City, our host community for Playland, Josh Cohn. We're also joined by our friend, the Lewis Borough Councilwoman, Jane Crimmins. See if I've gotten all of my uh, uh, fellow elected officials with us here. And as I said, we're going to be hearing from uh, Chairman Boykin and uh, Senator Mayor and Assemblyman Otis in a few minutes. Next, I'd like to invite a representative of our uh, leadership team, the LGBTQ uh, Advisory Board, which this year codified as a formal active entity in county government, formal policy-making body. She served in other capacities in matters of public policy, Robin Schlesinger. Robin.
Thank you, County Executive Latimer, friends and neighbors. I am honored to be representing the Westchester County LGBTQ Advisory Board. Not too long ago, I could not have imagined being be here before you today. I am a survivor of the way things used to be. I knew my gender before I could even read, but expressing or acknowledging this identity was unacceptable. I was diagnosed with gender identity disorder and threatened with placement in a mental hospital unless I conformed. Decades of self-destructive behavior followed. It was only when I transitioned and became my authentic self that these problems could be put behind me. I consider myself extremely fortunate to be alive and living an authentic, productive life. But my background is not unique. There are thousands of people with similar experiences. I speak out because the thought of children today going through what I did is unimaginable. We cannot go backwards in this struggle to allow people, all people, to be their authentic selves. What is happening across the US now is appalling. Trans children, their parents and their doctors are being asked to choose between health and the law, happiness and the law, reality and the law. What kinds of choices are these? Who gave lawmakers the right to tell us how to express how to dress, who to be, and where to pee. <laughs> Robbing someone of their identity is cruel and has no place in a society based on freedom and individual rights. We have real issues to address. Systemic racial and gender bias and violence against the LGBTQ plus community and people of color, most notably trans women of color. Fortunately, there are people here in Westchester and across the globe whose hearts are filled with love. I cannot say enough about the amazing people at The Loft. Their support groups, their support groups, education and social activities, and community outreach are nothing short of life-saving. I owe them so much and I'm so very proud to be a volunteer there. Thank you all. And I am also, and I'm also reminded how fortunate we are to be living among friends. The LGBTQ Advisory Board is a group of engaged citizens who meet monthly but work every day to make the county a better place for this very special community. Please join us. Our meetings are public and we want to hear your concerns and your ideas. As a woman who is not only trans, but lesbian and born with intersex conditions, I fully appreciate the importance of recognizing our diverse identities. The broad spectrum of the colors on the flags beside us and above us pay tribute to how beautiful it is to be different, to be special, to be whole. Being intersex is about being whole, not deformed and not damaged. And lastly, we need to redouble our efforts to accept and love every member of this diverse, beautiful, LGBTQIA plus inclusive community. We've all been the recipients of the negative and harsh judgments of others during our lives. Let's turn around that negativity and meet the challenges we face today with strength and love. Let's channel those experiences into something positive and beautiful. So whatever pride flag you're flying under, Reach out to your pride sibling with unconditional acceptance and love because pride is about supporting each other, loving each other, and making this world a better place than we found it. Happy Pride, everyone. Thank you, Robin Schlesinger. Next, we're going to ask the Loft Executive Director Judy Troilo to join us. Judy. Hi everyone, thank you for being with us here today for this incredible event. We're kicking off Pride Month. Now Pride is certainly a time of celebration, but it's also a time where we have a platform. And as Robin just shared, it's a time where we can bring attention 
to to the inequity um, and and do something about it so we need to use that platform but today I want to say that I am so proud to live in Westchester County and have a county executive like George Latimer and to have yes an administration and senators like Shelley Mayer who have always supported us even before George was county executive he supported the loft and he was there for us and although this year things are different we can't do our big celebration downtown um, I'm seeing something incredible and that's all across Westchester County I'm seeing groups of people in towns and villages and cities and communities come together and and celebrate pride and march and speak out so uh, it's just a wonderful experience to have. Now being here at Playland, I grew up in Westchester, and knowing that these flags will be flying, and this wonderful mural that will unveil soon will be there to welcome people who come into this park. When I was 12 or 13 years old, and I realized I was different, um, and I felt really alone, if I was able to come to this park and see this, I might have had a better uh, teenage experience because I would have been affirmed and I would have felt loved. So thank you, George. Thank you for this. Everybody, happy Pride. We're vaccinated. <laughs> We have the card to prove it. Next, we have a representative of the uh, youth community who's going to speak with us, uh, Ariana Quinones. I'm glad I still qualify as youth. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. My name is Ariana Quinones. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I am the Director of Racial Justice and Youth Programming for YWCA White Plains and Central Westchester. I'm also a proud member of the Westchester County Youth Board and have been a Westchester resident since I was three years old. Actually, Judy's story really touched me, except I am Puerto Rican, so in true Puerto Rican fashion, a story that my family never lets me live down is that when I was three years old and it was pouring rain, I threw a tantrum so my mom would take me to right Playland. Um, and they, I'm about to be 27 and they still never let me live it down. So I'm always overwhelmed by full circle moments like this in the sense of um, much like Judy, I also felt very alone. I came out to my parents when I was 13. I came out to my friends when I was 16. I came out as gender nonconforming when I was 23. It feels endless. And I will admit that this Pride Month feels a bit more exhausting than others. Um, I admit that I am thinking of all the folks who aren't with us. I'm thinking of all the trans kids who see their very existence debated on TV day in and day out. Um, and so if I do have a platform, I want to tell those kids, I want to tell kids in Westchester that they matter, um, that we love them, that they're valued. And thank you. And so I'll say, and so I'll say this, when I think about growing up queer in Westchester, I think that the only way that I survived is because of the love of my family and the love of my parents and my mother sitting me down at 16 and telling me, I want you to be your most authentic self in this home. This home is a safe place for you to be. And that has changed my entire life. And so if you have kids, if you have children, if you have nieces, nephews, grandkids, it's not loving them despite, it's loving them because. And it's, it's not acceptance and understanding. They don't need you to accept them. They need you to love them. And so this Pride Month, when we say love is love, we mean love with intention, with care, with access, with support, with real love. And that is why I'm here. I am a product of real love. And so I leave you all very simply with what we Puerto Ricans say, which is palante, siempre palante, which means to move forward. And that is what I move forward in the spirit of making this place safer, better, more loving for youth all over Westchester County. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariana. 27, 67, your youth. <laughs> I'm going to stay there for a minute. <laughs> um, many times when we have these types of events, the perception is that this is an event uh, by the county administration or the county executive personally, and that is not the case. We have two branches of government 
We work in harmony, but we work separately with independent authority. But we have the willingness to come together when there's strong agreement. And on this issue, the Board of Legislators and the County Administration have worked together very closely. And I might add, the Board has done so uh, bipartisanly and unanimously. So on behalf of the Board of Legislators, we've introduced a couple of members. I'd like their Chairman Ben Boykin to share some of his thoughts at this moment. Mr. Chairman. Good morning, and thank you, County Executive uh, George Latimer. You know, I'm looking out, and this is so great to see people without masks on. This is wonderful. Um, first of all, it is so my pleasure for the Board of Legislators to be part of this celebration of Pride Month, because the Board of Legislators 100% stands behind Pride Heritage Celebration Month. I'm pleased that I'm joined, as has already been stated, by Majority Leader Mary Jane Shemsky and also by Legislator Catherine Parker, who represents this area. Also, we're, we have with us our Director of Communications, Jason Travokas. At the Board of Legislators last year, it broke our heart when we had to stop our heritage celebrations in February because of COVID-19. But we brought them back this year in January. And on Monday night, I ask that you join us because the Board of Legislators will be celebrating LBGTQ Pride Heritage Month at the Board of Legislators. It will begin at 7 p.m. and you can join and watch it online. We have two wonderful honorees, Kristen Bowie and Barry Kramer. They will be honored and will receive proclamations from the Board of Legislators. So you can see that the board's desire to support pride, because in Westchester County, everyone is welcome, regardless of your status. And we will continue that at the board and with the administration under County Executive George Latimer. So it is my pleasure with my colleagues that are here and the other legislators that are not here today to be here to watch the, the raising of the flag and the unveiling of this mural. Thank you very much. The partnership at the county level of government is not the only partnership we have. I've introduced already, but I want to recognize one more time the municipal partners that we have. And all across this uh, county, you're seeing it at uh, Rye City Hall, at Rye Town Park and Crawford Park this weekend in New Rochelle. Municipal governments also making that statement that, that combines the needs and the aspirations of the LGBT community with all of the other residents and the people that make up Westchester. So again, I want to re-recognize Josh Cohn, who's the mayor of the city of Rye, uh, Jane Crimmins, who is a councilwoman in uh, the town of Lewisboro, and also Michael Sabatino, whom I did not introduce previously, a former majority leader of the City Council of Yonkers, who is now the Director of Constituent Services in the City of Yonkers. So uh, again, to our local municipal partners, thank you for your leadership in this area. And none of this would be possible if it was not for the leadership we have at the state level of government. Westchester is a, is a large community, but it is still a very small part of the state of New York. We have here with us today representing this area of Westchester County, good friends who also represent the other members of the state legislature from Westchester and elsewhere who have been leaders on these issues, on statewide issues. So I want to first ask State Senator Shelley Mayer and then followed by Assembly Member uh, Steve Otis to join us at the podium and share their thoughts. Senator Mayer. Thank you, George. And it's uh, really a not only a pleasure, it's a very special feeling to be here at Playland to see the flag raised and the mural. But I think there's two things. One, this is a celebration of love, as you said so eloquently. Thank you both for making clear that it's, it's not acceptance. It's an affirmative act of love that we need to challenge ourselves to. But it's also uh, an affirmation of the importance of law and lawmakers. 
And that's why it's so impressive to see this big group of elected officials here, because the bottom line is, without the leadership of people like our majority leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins, and in the assembly, we wouldn't have changed the walking while trans law. And we wouldn't have changed many other laws that lead to individual liberty for our brothers and sisters. So today we need to commit to love, but we need to commit to making laws that work and changing laws that don't and recognizing the power of government to do the right thing and also do the wrong thing. And it's our challenge to work together to make sure we're on the right side of history. Thank you. Well, Judy used the word affirmation, and that's a very important word because this is an affirmation that we respect every individual. And why we have to celebrate, we celebrate because we want to say we love you, we want to say we love everybody, but we also want to send a message that everybody should love and accept everybody. So the other word to use for today is repudiation. We have to, and we are here, to repudiate the hate that we see around the country, to repudiate the increase in bias crimes, hate crimes, and especially there have been all sorts of increases of those kinds of crimes in the last few years, but the real spike is against, against the, the pride community. And uh, this is dangerous stuff, this is life and death stuff that we are repudiating by showing our love here today. It is wonderful to, he to be here with all of you, but we have to share the love and get other people in this country to repudiate hate and to understand that if you believe in America and American values, you believe in the freedom of the individual, that's everybody, that's all of us. Thank you very much. And I want to recognize that we've just been joined by uh, County Legislator Catherine Borgia. <laughs> Catherine chairs the Budget and Appropriations Committee, and whatever we do has to have their approval. Um, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative that my fellow elected officials have the opportunity to share some thoughts. Uh, the powerful messages of today were the messages that you heard from Robin, from Judy, and from Ariana because that is what today is about. And when any of us in public office who have some particular demographic try to describe what somebody in another demographic is going through, we by nature fall short. I am an old, white, Christian, overweight, right-handed male, which puts me in about every majority category and in power, in every category you can think of. But this country has always been about trying to define who are the we in America. Who are the we? And that we was a very small group in the beginning and the founding of this country. The we did not include the Native Americans, the indigenous people who were here when the Europeans landed here. And they were treated shamefully. We try to correct that as we grow as a nation. And we haven't fully corrected it. The we did not include the African Americans who were brought over by the boatloads from Africa to serve for 150 years in servitude, 250 years in servitude, another 100 years of Jim Crow, and then about 50 years since the end of Jim Crow, where we're still striving to figure out how are we going to have a multicultural society that works for everybody. The we did not include Asian Americans who came over and helped lay the track for the Transcontinental Railroad. And it didn't include all of the immigrants that came in from South America, including that big piece of Mexico that we won back in 1845 in an aggressive war that gave us states that we treat as American, but we're part of Mexico. American history is what it is. We can try to describe it differently. So the experience that I've had is nothing like the experience that Ariana, Judy, Robin, or so many other people have had. But growing up as an Italian-Irish kid, what did I hear from the people before me? That when the Irish came, they were the other. And for a long time, they were the nannies and, and the maids and the people that cleaned and did the manual labor. What did I hear from the Italian side of the family? That they were the other. They weren't treated as European whites when they first came here. What do I learn from that over the course of my extra 40 years that I have on Ariana? I learned that we have to define the we as broadly as we can 
if what we want is the most effective Westchester and the most effective United States of America. We cannot afford to tell people that they are the other, to not accept them for who they are and how they live and how they love, and set parameters that are, are arbitrary. Because over time, we understood the evil of slavery and the evil of genocide of the Native Americans and the foolishness not to accept the European immigrants the day they hit here because they helped build the country and so did the Asian immigrants and the Latin American immigrants and now I don't know if this is the last frontier but to accept people for how they identify themselves and how how they find themselves in this society to accept them for the people that they are not for any other external that that the people of the LGBT community are part of the American we, part of the Westchester we. The first two letters in Westchester is we. All of us together. All of us together. This mural that we're now going to unveil and the flags that we're going to uh, uh, raise, and I want to thank Catherine Chaffee, our Director of Communications. She's always in the background someplace and her team of people, which are multiple number of people here. If you left this to me, it would have been a very bland event. But she and the folks in the loft came up with a beautiful way to celebrate and to commemorate this day. And I'm grateful to the wisdom to be able to do that. So without any further ado, I guess we're going to unveil the mural. I think we have our instructions. Repeat them again for all of us. All right. and start pulling it in. Let's see how good your politicians are at these things.
did last year. Just one or two questions if you want to go to the show. It's up to you. That'd be nice. It's a package, right? Yeah.